Smith. Welcome to another edition of Ken Smith Fishing. A couple of quick shout outs first. Uh, the first Outlaw Outdoors team series since uh, sort of the Texas lockdown. Big congratulations go out to uh, Clay Phillips and David Shaw. They won that type thing with 26 pounds, I think. I was just looking there, yeah, 2617. Uh, Clay's from Huntington. I, I think David's, I'm not exactly sure where David's from, but uh, local guys. You know, interestingly to me, I noticed it um, seemed like every other boat that had a 16, 18 plus pound sack was one of those old champions. And a lot of those guys are those uh, old Rayburn, Lufkin, North End guys up there. So uh, congrats to those guys. That's a great win for them. Uh, and then also up here in North Texas, uh, Bass Champs on Cedar Creek, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, Drew Sloan and Nolan Jackson won that tournament. I didn't check the weights on that. Let's take a quick look. Uh, looks like a little bit over 24 pounds with about a three pound uh, win. Uh, second place was 21 and change. So uh, almost a three pound win there. Congratulations also, uh, friends of Ken Smith Fishing. So congrats to you guys, a great job. Uh, I, we did not get to fish this weekend, or I did not get to fish. Moon Pie fished with the substitute, so uh, we had some things come up that I couldn't fish. But uh, 330 teams on Reverend, one heck of a big field, and I think pretty big field also for Bass Champs on Cedar Creek. So more stuff coming up on Reverend. Looks like we're back to the tournament swing. Outlaw did a great job running that uh, weigh-in, so I don't think we're going to have any problems having more weigh-ins. And I even heard him get on to some guys on the microphone, I was watching on Facebook Live about congregating and made them split up. So uh, maybe a little tough for a tournament director, but I think something he had to do to give us all the right to continue getting to tournament fish. Uh, for you guys this week, I went out and just smacked them. Uh, this is going to be, uh, I fished from 6.12 to about 9.45 or 9.50 in the morning, and I think there's 31 fish on this video. So I'm going to split it into two pieces, which is kind of fitting because I caught them really super good shallow early. Uh, and then I backed out and I caught them on, uh, I caught them uh, dragging on a big crankbait a little bit later in the morning, starting maybe at about 7.45 or 8 o'clock and caught them, not every cast, but, but caught them real consistently all morning. And actually, you'll see I caught a couple of better fish when I got back offshore. Uh, got away a little bit from that shad spawn that was up there on the bank. So this should be a really entertaining couple of pieces of video. And I'm going to share some bait info with you guys as well. So let's jump into some fishing here. And uh, this will be part one, mostly shallow fish. And I think I stick a few deep fish in here right at the end. Well, pulled up on this point, it's really, really early. And uh, I can't see the shed moving around, but the bird's here. And that one swirled on it and missed it. And next cast, and he's got a buddy up there with him. That was exactly the same spot. I'm gonna say there's a little group of fish right there. On the old black head knocker buzz bait. I'm telling y'all, that is a buzz bait. Unlike a few others. I'll put a link below where you can get that thing. It is so noisy. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> that one missed it. Buzz bait jacked up.
I don't even know if that fish was hooked. I think he just had a mouthful of frog and didn't want to turn it loose. By the way, it's 614. talk a little bit about the frog I'm throwing right there. So uh, you all know Sixth Sense has got a frog going out. I had two prototypes and I literally they've been eaten to pieces. Uh, mostly by a fish but also a little bit by a, a terrier. Uh, Bo got a hold of the tail of one of them and chewed it up one day without me seeing it and luckily didn't get a hook. But uh, I was throwing a spro frog and I was throwing a, a popping spro frog and I throw both, and a lot of guys ask me, when do you go to the popping frog versus the non-popping frog? And what I'll tell you is, when I feel like I need to skip it back under stuff, I move away from that popping pop frog. Now, you can skip a popping frog, popping frog, hard to say. But anytime that bait turns forward and that concave mouth starts catching the water, it doesn't skip as well. You don't have that problem with a non-popping frog. So when I'm fishing what you're seeing me fishing here today, I'm throwing a popping frog. Later in the day, or if I'm around matted grass, or I'm really having to skip it back up under overhanging limbs, I'll go to a non-propping frog and catch those fish that way. So that's generally how I did it. I'm just doing this basically, I think it's called a nasty shad is the color. I've got the color right there for you. Uh, but that's how I was catching those fish early, and they were whacking it. Started out throwing that head knocker buzz bait again, but, uh, and I, I had a couple swirl on it and not get it. You saw I caught four or five in a row right off the bat, but then I had three or four swirl on it and not get it. And part of the problem was they were right against the bank. And that buzz bay would hit the water and a lot of times, but it was, it was still underwater when they were popping on it. So I wanted to put that popping frog up there where I could let it hit and then start working it and they'd eat it immediately. So that's why you see me just make a real quick adjustment. I had a buzz bait and a, and a popping frog on the front deck and I made that adjustment really, really quickly. Fish was so strong, he's not big. I foul hooked him. Look at here. I mean, it's a good fish, but I foul hooked him. You don't see that very often on a frog. That doesn't happen very often on the old frog. But I caught you in the side. Hmm.
That may be catch of the morning. Over the tree limb. That was some dude perfect bank shot stuff right there. Very nice. Not a good cast, but a good result. Big old post spawner up there. She did not like my frog being up in her groove. been a great big one we might not have got him That fish was on it. She saw it. I set it up, and as soon as I set it up, she said, Gimme. She was following, I bet you. Trying to figure out what it was, and then when it decided to try to get away, she said, Gimme. Go. This one on the Carolina rig. A nice little chunk out here. 
dragon. Boat's in about 18 feet of water. That fish is at about 13, 14 feet of water. On the side of the point, not up on top of the point. That's the wrap on the first part of this video. I'll have the second part of this video up for you later this week. And I think you're really going to enjoy it as well. So uh, stick around. We'll have more video up for you uh, Thursday morning. Thanks, guys.